Hans and Rivian, two of my best friends, are in the house tonight. They're from Paris, France. They live here in San Diego. So, have you guys, uh, have you guys been to the uh, fair yet? No. You haven't been? No. Okay, so I went to the fair yesterday. How many of you all have, uh, you know, you met somebody or not necessarily meet someone. It could be a material thing, a bed, a car, telephone, whatever. I fell in love yesterday at the fair. I fell in love twice at the same place at the fair. So, who, who did I fall in love with? It wasn't a human being. It wasn't an animal. Let's put it this way. So, I'm walking just like we all do at the fair, and you see all of these vendors and they advertise and certain things. So, I said to myself, I'm walking past the jacuzzis. And as soon as I walk past it, I start to uh, just in my mind thinking to myself, how would I look in this jacuzzi? So the guy says, come on over. He shouldn't have done that. So I walk over, I, I get in the jacuzzi. And I, but it's a jacuzzi that you don't just sit down. You lay back, and it's jetting your legs, your thighs, all of that. I'm like, okay. So then this guy, right next door, he's got a chair. So you massage therapists. I know we have a couple in the house. Miss Alicia's here. BJ is here. So you guys know about these massage chairs. But I sat in this chair, and I fell in love. So bottom line is, I left the fair with a jacuzzi and a chair. So, I don't have a, an accountant or anything like that to tell me how I'm supposed to spend my money. But the, the one thing that kept coming to me was, John, you can't take it with you. So hell, I'm spending it now. So, I have a jacuzzi coming soon, and I also have a chair that Oh my goodness, this chair, it actually reclines all the way to like zero gravity. I had no idea what zero gravity was until I got in this chair. So, not telling you all to go to the fair and buy a chair or a jacuzzi. Not telling you to go to the fair at all. But uh, I had to do something because my riding days at the fair are long gone. I haven't been on a ride in the fair since Moby Dick was a minnow. So, anyway, I'm John Phillips, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Y'all can clap for that. That's good. Some of you guys helped me celebrate my 65th birthday at Jazz at the Creek. We had a great time. Miss Sandrea is here. And, Sandrea, you know, I know the lady next to you, your sister, I don't know if she's your sister, you probably have her own job. We have meetings at Mandate Records. I forgot her name. I'm so sorry. I'm apologizing in front of everybody. Robbie. Robbie. Robbie, thank you, my dear, for being here with Sandra. So, we have an exciting show for you this evening. We have Mr. Lynn Roundtree here. So as I call these people out, you guys got cell phones. Google these people. Mr. David P. Stevens is here. This guy's one of the hottest, baddest guitarists yeah. I've ever seen. Also, right up the road, just a little bit, Colorado, Mr. Jay White is in the house tonight. Then, coming out here in just a few to entertain you, is a good friend of mine. We attend the same church, St. Stephen's Church of God in Christ on Imperial Avenue. Miss Maria Antoinette is here. Not yet. You know, Maria has performed for the Los Angeles Southeast Symphony Orchestra as their principal harpist. Her latest CD, Straight From The Heart, has reached the top five on the Smooth Jazz Global Billboard charts and was considered for a Grammy in five categories. Maria's new single, Overture, is currently number one on the Smooth Jazz chart. Would you like to hear this young lady come out here and play this harp? 
That don't sound like you want to hear her to me. Would you like to hear Maria Antoinette? How many, how many of you have ever seen a heart play? I never met one until I met Maria, and this young lady can play this heart. She's also a member of the group Jazz in Pink, an all-female group that just tears up Southern California. So can you do me one quick favor? I mean, just really, really, as she lives here in San Diego, okay? So put your hands together and give her a warm Mediterranean Jazz and Supper Club welcome for Harpist Extraordinaire and my friend, Miss Maria Antoinette. <laughs> So we're breaking barriers and stretching the boundaries of the harp, and it's been quite a journey. Well, next up, for those of you who uh, listen to Music Choice Channel, so if you have it, I'm going to feature another tune uh, off my Straight from the Harp CD titled Fly Away. So, enjoy. 
really, you know, the harp has been mostly relegated to the orchestra. And most of you hear it that way, and you drink of some uh, dreamy, quiet, boring background music. So when I come and tell people I play the harp, and they're like, oh, okay, they, you know what that means. And I go, but I play smooth jazz, funk, r and they go, well, we never heard that before. So it's kind of like breaking boundaries. It's, it's really pushing through walls that people can't imagine. So, but this was my idea when I was in the orchestra. You know, I'm sitting there playing the harp off this beautiful, wonderful classical music. And I said, I want to make this harp funky. I want to make it play the music that I grew up with with R&B, yeah. and so it's been a, you know, a transition to find someone to show you how to do that, a transition from a classical musician into you know, a smooth jazz artist. You know, and what helped me do that was Jazz and Pink, which is a, yes. a group, yes. And uh, you know, many mistakes are made, because I didn't know. But you know, in 10 years time, there's been a lot of growth. And you just keep going back, you just keep trying, and you're just like, okay, I'm not gonna give up, I've come too far. Okay, all righty. So the next tune, how many Curtis Mayfield fans do I have? Yeah. Yeah. I love Curtis Mayfield. And uh, when I was doing my album, I said, you know, my producer asked me, he goes, what do you want to play? And I had an opportunity to do on a compilation CD. And I said, you know, there's a song I've been always wanting to play, and, uh, and I really want to do it. And it was the song that actually put me on the map. Because what we did was we recorded it, and then I hired a national radio guy, and I said, well, let's just see what happens. So we did that, and he uh, put it out there, and next thing you know, every, uh, the radio stations were calling Maria, Maria, when is the album coming out? And I hadn't even planned on doing an album. It's like, well, six months. <laughs> so anyway, so this was the uh, song, Give Me a Love. And so this is going to require a little bit of audience participation. So right. when, we say, give me your love. I want to hear, give me your love from all of you guys. Okay?
those of you in the house remember that scene in the Superfly movie? It was a scene in the bathtub, you know. It was, it was not the cool thing, and that song was a song that was played during that time. Now, how many people remember that? Okay, see, look, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, indeed, yes. Retro driver. Ready to So that's what we So I'm gonna, we're going to switch up now. We're going to go to the beat. And uh, I'm going to feature some more music off uh, straight from the Harp CD. And I'm going to open up a song with a song called Special Treasures. And uh, it was written by a friend of mine by the name of Reggie Codrington. I don't know if you guys know Reggie. He's an amazing saxophonist. So he wrote the song and then he gave it to me. And I said, Reggie, do you mind? I'm going to record this, but I'm going to do a whole different twist on it. So he goes, no, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind. So this is my version. Uh, Reggie, uh, special treasures.
to tell people that it's been quite a journey with the heart. It really has been. Going to music school and, and just all the challenges that go on. You know, we're playing this amazing instrument. And uh, I can tell you that, you know, when I came home and I told my parents, I want to play the harp. And they're like, what? The harp? They didn't even know what the harp was. And I was exposed to it in uh, middle school because people say, why the harp? Why did you choose the harp? Uh, I went to an all-girl private school. And in that school, they had a music program. And then once a year, they had instruments come from the orchestra. And uh, one, during that one month, the harp came in and the harp is demonstrated. And I thought, oh my God, that's what I want to do. So when I came home and I said, I want to play the harp, they're like, we're well, not paying for the harps, and we're not paying for no harp lessons. <laughs> so because, well, well, you know, we're like, we don't know what that is. But anyway, to make a long story short, it was a journey, uh, an alone journey. My brother owned a Jack in the Box franchise. And I said, can I come work at the Jack in the Box after school? I was 13. And he goes, why do you, why, why do you, wanna, why do you wanna do that? And I was like, well, because I wanna play the harp and I have to pay for my lessons. Nice. So he goes, okay. So he let me do it and in came the house, a little small harp, and thus began my lessons with the, the harpist with the symphony. And that began my journey with the harp. And so, you know, doing all this wonderful, beautiful classical music. So, this next song is really about this journey. It's called Walk the Walk. Because indeed, I truly had to walk this walk. You know, and to convince people that, um, you know, that this is what I wanted to do, and to, you know, tell my parents, and, you know, to get in the room and practice and do what I was supposed to do. So anyway, this song is an original tune, and uh, it's titled "Walk the Walk," and it is featuring none other than Miss Karen Briggs on violin. <laughs> and we know she's a beast. <laughs>
last two. And uh, oh, no. I know, I wish, but they got me on the time schedule and there are two other people behind me and they said, Ramirez, you got 30 minutes. So, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, you, know, in the, in, you know, in my heart journey again, I wanted to produce music that people can dance off of. They said, you can't make music that people can dance on the heart. Nobody dances to the heart. Oh, yes, you can. We can do it. So anyway, came up with this tune called the title, Boogie Nights. So it's like, Boogie Nights on the heart, what? So anyway, if you guys uh, feel the need to feel free to get up and kind of do a day dance, you can. But this is my version of the Boogie Nights on the heart. Again, straight from the heart. CD special edition.
So I'm trying to figure out uh, my next tune in the heart. Oh. Actually, the name of the tune is called Heart. I wouldn't know how to play this thing if my life depended on it. So, Tony does have CDs. Three of them. That's Big Dale over there yelling out. Best barbecue in town. That's Big Dale right there. So, if you'd like to take Tony, I call her Tony. Miss Maria Antoinette home with you tonight. See uh, Big Dale here. I, 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 no, don't see me, see her. I'm assuming he's a spokesperson. But anyway, Maria has CDs on sale today, so if you ladies and gentlemen would like to have some, by all means, you know, make sure you check with her. We have three more people coming, but most importantly, you guys on either side, there was a, a, a screenshot up for our next show, Mr. Daryl Walker, paying tribute to the one and only Mr. Al Jarreau. Yeah. Featuring our opening act, Miss Sarissa McQueen. All right. Now, if you don't know who Sarissa McQueen is, you may have seen her yep. perform as Nina Simone what? on this stage. And this young lady, as they say in the music world, this young lady can blow. Not blow, she can blow. <laughs> There's a difference. So if you come out and check her out. Al Jarreau just recently celebrated a birthday, I believe it was yesterday. So we're going to do a tribute to him. And Brother Darrell Walker not only plays sax, he also sings. So let me move over to the side so that Brother James, Maria's manager, can move this heart. I'm going to get out of the way and continue to talk to you. But I want you to pay attention to the screen because this is Father's Day. Ladies, we just recently celebrated Mother's Day. Now it's time for you to take care of us. How many fathers we have in the house tonight? I mean, how many of you believe there's a difference between the terminology father and daddy? Do y'all think there's a difference between that? Daddy is kind of the guy that strolled in. You know, wait a minute now, let me finish. Let me finish, because I'm saying it's only terminology. Some of y'all call y'all daddy's pop pop. You know, whatever. So anyway, Paul, Paul, Daddy, Father, Mister, whatever. It's Father's Day next weekend, and we're going to have a great show here, as you can see on the screen, featuring Mr. Daryl Walker paying tribute to Al Jarreau, and we will open up the show with Miss Sarissa McQueen. Is that okay? I feel like I don't have to tell you this next announcement because I don't see anybody over there, but we want to keep this area clear clear here in front of the door because the waitresses they can't get to you to get you your order if they can't get through that door because you're standing there so if you want to you know take shots of the of the musicians on stage and video them do it real quickly and get out of the way because somebody is waiting on a drink and if they see you standing there blocking that door 